<laughs> Here in the basement of Tomb Crate Headquarters, Bob and I have mined our way in and out of hell to find you a rare Halloween game. Flames lap at our feet as the great old ones grant us their knowledge. So, Bob, what has this Samhain harvest graced us with? <laughs> oh, you mortals are gonna love this one. When it comes to the survival horror genre, a ton of great games are swept under the rug. But here in the United States, one game truly was hidden from us. Siren Blood Curse. A semi-reboot to the 2003 game simply titled Siren. Siren Blood Curse is a pulse-quickening combination of immortal enemies, Japanese folklore, and stealth. You play as an American film crew in search of a forgotten village in Japan, only to come to the wrong place at the wrong time. After witnessing an unholy ritual that's gone horribly right, you find yourself staring down the business end of a terrifying nationwide curse. The sound of a siren blares out into the night sky. The world turns dark and blood red, as the dead rise once again in the form of Shibito. A hokey, grainy, documentary-styled romp ensues as you try to survive the Shibito onslaught and put the curse to rest. The Shibito are very similar to zombies, but much, much worse because they're essentially mutant corpses who still have consciousness, motor skills, speaking ability, and immortality. What's scarier than a zombie? How about a demonic cop who can operate a vehicle, fire a handgun, call in reinforcements, and thinks that slaughtering you is his job? There's no comparison. Since the Shibito are essentially human-shaped landmines, you're forced to utilize stealth and a limited number of weapons to your advantage while picking up clues and solving puzzles. Think Metal Gear Solid meets Silent Hill meets Resident Evil meets that fucking thing from Dead Space that never dies. Because that's essentially all this game is, but also something a little more. It's difficult to explain, but the way this game combines these elements is unique. Whether it's due to the mistranslation or the writing in general, you never truly understand what's going on. And it plays to the game's advantage. Similar to Silent Hill, there's a huge sense of ambiguity, isolation, and what the fuck is that? Aside from simple objectives that are thrown your way, you're on your own, which makes trial and error a game mechanic in and of itself. You play as a new character in every chapter, and each character plays a little differently. Sometimes you're a rough and tough Japanese marksman, but sometimes you're a scared little girl with no way to fight back. Ain't that just like life? Or in this case, death. Because you will die a lot while fumbling around in these dark environments. The only thing you have that gives you an edge in this game is sight jacking. Which is basically this game's way of allowing you to see through the eyes of your Shibito enemies and figuring out their patterns of movement. Although I give this game a ton of praise for its uniqueness, it does have some huge drawbacks. Not only is the game very convoluted story-wise, but the camera is as well. It's glued to your back and is difficult to move. The melee mechanics get really weird. Your screen is often hogged by weird visual effects or the sight jacking screen. And the worst drawback of all, if you're in the United States, you're probably not going to be able to get a physical copy of this game. It was only released physically for PlayStation 3 in Japan and the UK. In the US, it was originally sold to us in downloadable chunks through the PlayStation Store. Thus, every level is plagued and divided by chapters and unnecessary recaps. <laughs> How evil is that? Hopefully not as evil as this episode of Brad's Game Breaks.